your thesis that it's a moral imperative that we as human beings assure the survival of life. Why is that a moral imperative? And, and are you sure that that moral imperative is not in our biology that you want to change? You can change uh, our drive for ethics, our drive for morality. In principle, you could adjust these genes the same way you can have you know, breed dogs that are more ferocious or docile. In principle, the same traits appear in humans. You could in modify them to make us more moral, whatever you would define that as. Yeah, I mean, I'd be pretty concerned about defining that. Yeah, which would well, be... We don't have a great history as human beings of agreeing on what's moral. No, and even there's, there's a really great paper called The Moral Machine Experiment, where researchers went to countries around the world, that's th thousands of people, what would you do if a car has to hit someone in the road? And it, you have to choose, is it a male or a female? An old person or, you know, a baby? And they'd ask people around the world, you have to make a choice. You're a machine. You're trying to develop an AI with a moral code. You have to pick. And in most places, you would kill the old person, not the young person. That was generally universally. But depending on which culture in the world, whether you let the male die or the female die depends on where you are. Or whether it's someone who's disabled versus you know, not as disabled, it would depend on where you are as to the priorities of the morals of that society. So we know across already Earth, there's a variegated moral landscape. It's not uniform. But I still think, the, to back to your question, the duty is if, if anything you value in life, uh, you want to persist, life is a prerequisite for that. Life has to exist to have any other value uh, appear, including a value system. Like life is the prerequisite for a value system. So if you want any value system of any kind to exist, life has to exist. I think that's not the only reason for life, but life is also one of the few things in the universe that resists entropy, that controls matter and, and creates new kinds of information. And I think life has an intrinsic value, a value independent of us giving it value because of these properties. So, Rana, do you, I wanna get your response to that. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure. Life, no? Nah. Well, I mean, it's kind of a, cyclic argument, I guess. It's a really self-serving thing. It would be like uh, asking the parakeets, like, who do you think should be in charge? And it's always going to be a parakeet the Parakeets candidate. are always in charge. Yeah, it's a very specious sort of thing. No, but I would say, uh, but it, uh, I, if an AI came around that said, listen, we've decided you guys all suck, yeah. and we're going to wipe you all out, but we're going to continue the moral imperative of life, in this case, life would be in the form of AI, and preserve other forms of life and sometimes organic life, but we'll carry that moral mission forward, I would die a happy man. And well, they, would, they would take care of us for a while. They, like, take, like take care Rana, of us. I, I want to ask you if you, as a scientist, believe that there's such a thing as morality outside of our biological evolution, which has endowed us with these emotions and these principles. So we think babies are, wow. you know, to be protected. But if we start to genetically alter mm. people so that babies aren't born from people and they're in exowombs and they're not born, you know, they're just a cell that's dividing and then we eliminate the psychology of caring about babies, what's the morality of protecting babies? Do you, do you believe it's real mm. or is it biological? Can I have this part censored if it, I, yeah, we'll, we'll cut it out I of the video. I just want to say, I'm not a, I don't speak for the California Institute of Technology in the following statements. It's just my own personal thing, and I just, it's about, it probably speaks about my education and my upbringing more than anything else. Um, I don't think so. I think it's just an arbitrary set of rules that we make up because if we didn't do it, then society as an organism wouldn't propagate. And so if you say our moral duty is to make sure that the uh, information diagram, which is us, needs to be propagated all over the universe so that our norms and morals and sort of our thoughts infect the universe. Then, in you know, once you assume that, then I say, yeah, sure, that makes sense. We need to just completely take over the galaxy and, and be all over the place. And the more uh, people that we have who have our mindset, I'm like we're winning in some kind of sense. But you could also say, Ah, you know, really the moral imperative is to roll the dice as much as we can. Like, we really want to have lots of mutations because we don't know what's the best form of life out there. And we're probably just the best thing that the Earth was able to cough up. We're just, eh, here we are. You know, we, like the dolphins didn't now, 
they don't have any thumbs, so they couldn't outcompete us or something like that. So now we're in oh, charge. Oh, my dolphins had thumbs. Hey, Chris, can you do that? <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I th I'm okay with our moral system. And we have to pick something arbitrary. I'm okay with this one. I, you know, sorry, Chris, please. And I think if, if they, you know, the, it, it wouldn't just be life to propagate our life everywhere in the universe. It would be to go to find life, preserve life. And I, I do think to, uh, place multiple bets, actually. Uh, one of my favorite parts of writing and part of the, the book was, what if there's an ocean world and we probably couldn't survive there as primates, but we send dolphins or octopuses, you got tentacles. You know, what if we send all these sea creatures oh, cool. with the ones that have the greatest chance of evolving intelligence and send them all to the ocean what, worlds? What happens when they get and, so intelligent they start sending you places? That, 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 that's fine, as, as long as there's barbecue sauce and tentacles. Well, there's this... Um, uh, I can't believe. I just got this image that when we go to the airports, all, all the pilots are dolphins for yeah. some reason. I think that's what you're implying. I think they're all wearing like hats as <laughs> yeah. well. And they're, yeah, that's a, good. I, I can't believe I'm going to quote the Buddha only because I've never done it, not because I don't love the Buddha. Oh. Um, isn't the quote, um, I mean, the, the Buddha? sorry, I'm the, reaching a little deeper um, in the brainstem. Give me a second. Um, even death is not to be feared by one who has lived wisely. And isn't there something in the acceptance of our extinction? 